Okay, so we're going to move on. Um, we completed the information pertaining to job 50, job 51. Now we're going to work on job 52. So again, I'm just going to copy this information so I don't have to re um, input all that information and switch it to job 52. And as you can see, we will go back to the textbook and look at the information for job 52. It shows us here the direct materials of 30,000 and the direct labor of 20. So we'll go back to our Excel sheet, put in our 30,000 direct materials and our direct labor of 20, and we should be able to calculate then our manufacturing overhead of 140% of our direct labor. So as you can see there, with those three items, it will provide us with um, the information for um, job 52. And as I move on here, I think I had to do another job. If I remember correctly, maybe not. Um, that's our job 52. I'll go back here. Um, open job cost sheets 50, 51, and 52. Enter the January 1 balance on the job sheet for cost number 50. Okay. Next, for C, we're going to prepare the journal entries to record the purchase of raw materials, the factory labor costs incurred, and the manufacturing overhead costs incurred during the month of January. So here what we'll do is go um, to the um, information and start preparing the journal entries. The first journal entry we want to prepare relates to the purchase of raw materials. You see here it tells us in January it purchased additional raw materials of 90,000 on account. So let's go back up here. I'm going to just create some um, air space here. And for part C, we're going to have our journal entries. Um, the first journal entry relates to the 90,000 purchases. And think about that. Raw materials will always be put into the company as a debit to raw materials inventory of um, 90,000. And we will always, unless they said they paid them with cash, we will always credit an accounts payable of the same amount. Generally speaking, um, that will be a credit item. If it says paid with cash, then we will know not to show a payable, we would show that into cash. That's the first item that we are going to um, record. Then it tells us to add journal entries for the factory labor cost and manufacturing overhead costs. It incurred factory labor costs of 70,000. Of this amount, 16,000 related to employer payroll taxes. Now we worked on a problem in class, for those of you that weren't there, I'll go over some more exercises after this one, but with factory labor, we know it always is initially recorded directly as a debit to factory labor. It's going to first go into factory labor, and then from there, they will be assigned to various jobs, but the actual payment of the wages will be a debit to factory labor of 70000 Now it gives us some helpful information. Part of factory labor is the amount that the employees receive. And you know a big amount is what is held over for employer payroll taxes. And so we will, factory labor of 70, will credit factory wages payable and we'll also credit our payable of employer payroll taxes oops 
payable. Now, it tells us that of this amount, 16000 went into employer payroll taxes. And so we know the difference has to be factory wages payable. So that's a $54,000 difference that we'll credit. And the again, the way we got this 54000 is they gave us the factory labor of 70. They gave us employer payroll taxes of 16. The difference would be factory wages payable. Next, we have um, incurred manufacturing overhead costs as follows. Indirect materials of 17000 indirect labor of 20000 depreciation expense on equipment of 19000 and various other manufacturing overhead costs on account 16000 So remember, what we are assigning to each job is that predetermined rate. These are actual costs that were incurred in the period. So we need to still record that to a manufacturing overhead account. What we'll do here is debit manufacturing overhead. We'll be crediting the accounts payable of 16. We'll credit the accumulated depreciation of the equipment for 19. We will credit our raw materials inventory for 17. And we will credit our factory labor for 20,000. Now, how did we figure this out? And again, we know that the sum is going to be the combination of all of those together, 72,000. Let's just take a look at how we are calculating um, this information. It tells us we incurred indirect materials of 17,000. Okay, what that means is the raw materials that we have already on hand in raw materials Remember, we talked about in class that some of those raw materials get put into um, a specific job under raw materials. And also, they can, uh, under direct materials, I should say, and then also, they can also be put into indirect materials, which actually goes into manufacturing overhead. So in this case, since it's telling us indirect materials were 17,000, we know we're going to want to take them out of the raw materials um, account or credit that. And since they're indirect, they're going to go into manufacturing overhead. We also know from this that it's telling us indirect labor is 20000 Well, when the wages were paid, we will always take factory labor, debit it, and credit the payables. Now it's assigning labor to manufacturing overhead. So we know then we're going to credit our factory labor or reduce our factory labor so it can be assigned into manufacturing overhead. Likewise, we also know that our um, van various manufacturing overhead costs on account. That means it's an accounts payable. It's a bill of 16000 will be an accounts payable. That gives us that information. Um, and the depreciation expense on equipment. So those are the four items that we're going to place into manufacturing overhead um, for this month. And we're going to make sure that we provide this journal entry. So these are actual costs that are getting put into manufacturing overhead. As we're allocating by job, we're creating a predetermined rate. And then we'll ultimately match it up in the end to see if we've underapplied our overhead or overapplied our overhead. 
So don't get frustrated yet. Hang in there with me as we keep moving on here to the next journal entry. So the next journal entry tells us, um, well, I think we um, took care of all C. Now we have to do um, part D. Prepare the journal entries to record the assignment of direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead costs to production. In assigning manufacturing overhead cost, use the overhead rate calculated in A, the 140%. Post all costs to the job sheets as necessary. So I probably got ahead of myself with creating all those job cost sheets up front. Um, let's look at in D, um, recording these transactions. Now remember, you can think of the jobs as like subsidiary accounts and then the um, work in process is the the large control account so what we're supposed to do here is assign all the various um, job costs directly into work in process let's start with raw materials if we go down to our job sheets we know that our direct materials for January, we have our 10,000 here, we have our 39,000 here, and our 30,000 here. So as far as our, um, first of all, debit work in process inventory, and we'll credit out our raw materials, we're reducing that raw material inventory account and putting them specifically now into work in process and again it is still an inventory account but it's no longer a part of raw materials it's now a part of the work in process on these jobs so we will want to debit our work in process of 79,000 and we will credit raw materials since that now they're out of the raw materials inventory we're crediting them reducing it it's out of raw materials and it's going in to our work in process we're going to do the same thing with our factory labor we'll have a work in process it told us and gave us information regarding the direct labor for the the period of factory labor it gave us the information that we had direct labor in January of 12 5000 now remember this 12000 was work in process ending balance in December that they weren't it wasn't completed yet so that was not um that was sitting on the books at the end of the month in work in process so we don't need to worry about the journal entry for that 12,000 that was put into work in process in the previous month but we did add 5,000 in January labor costs for job 50 for job 51 we added 25,000 and for job 52 we added 20,000 for a total amount there of 50000 that we're crediting from factory labor because again remember when we make the we pay the bill we debit factory labor credit the payables now what we're doing is taking that factory labor and we're assigning it to jobs so we're going to credit or reduce that factory laborhood labor account and we're going to now debit that into work in process and as you can see the detail here with the various job accounts job cost sheets um, but these general uh, journal entries are just um, the large summation of the detail I think I better um, stop this and I'll move on to part three lecture